A startup from Austria has designed a helicopter that flies with wheels instead of rotors. The designs look like complete science fiction at first, but as you can see here, there is already a real prototype that shows that the technology works. Let's find out how the whole thing works physically, what the advantages are compared to other electric flight concepts and what hurdles there still are. And in Germany we say, los geht's. In fact, this technology, rollers as rotors, has been in use since the 1930s. However, not in helicopters, but in shipping. There it is mainly used in tugboats and floating cranes. The reason for this is that this drive makes the ships extremely maneuverable. Research into using this technology in aviation has also been going on for some time, but this has not yet been possible. Until now, that is, because Cyclotech has already built a working prototype. But before we take a closer look at it, we first need to clarify how you can actually take off with such a roller rotor. In a helicopter, the rotors provide the lift. The reason for this is the Bernoulli effect. The individual rotor blades are rounded at the top and flat at the bottom, similar to the wings of an airplane. When the rotor turns, air flows around the rotor blades. Due to their shape, the air flows faster at the top than at the bottom. And this provides lift because the air is faster at the top than at the bottom. A vacuum is created at the top, which creates a suction, so to speak, so that the helicopter takes off. To prevent the helicopter from simply turning in circles, a tail rotor is needed to stabilize the whole thing. So a helicopter can take off and if you want to fly in one direction, you change the angle at which the large rotors are positioned. That's broken down a lot, but it's a simple principle. So let's come to the rollers instead of the rotors. The rollers actually function relatively similar to rotors. They also consist of individual rotor blades which have a similar shape to airplane wings. These rotor blades therefore also rotate around an axis, but they are at a 90 degree angle to this axis of rotation. It's like folding up the rotor blades on a helicopter and then mounting this rotor to the side. The special thing about Cyclotex technology is that it can be used to generate an airflow in a specific direction and th this direction can be controlled. This targeted airflow generates a thrust, for example a force that can push the flying object away from the ground or accelerate it in one direction. To understand how this works, let's take a closer look at the structure of the rotor roll. The Cyclotech design is based on the principles of Wolf H. Snyder propeller. The rotor blades are firmly connected to the outer rollers and therefore always rotate on a constant radius around the fixed axis of rotation in the center. However, they are completely fixed but each have another axis on the inside. This means that their angle of inclination can change but they always move along the same circular path. To control the angle of inclination of the rotor blades, there is another ring around the axis of rotation that can rotate independently. This ring is connected to the individual rotor blades by metal struts. The connecting point is located slightly behind the respective axis of the rotor blades. This connection between the inner ring and the rotor blades make it possible to control the angle of inclination of the rotors. In the starting position, the axis of rotation of the entire roller is in the center of the inner ring. However, if you now move the center of the ring in one direction, the rotor blade still rotates on the same outer axis, but the angle of inclination changes at very specific points during this rotation. You can see this in detail here in this animation. The center of the inner ring is shifted slightly upwards. This changes the angle of inclination of the rotor blades on their circular movement so that they displace as much air as possible upwards, which creates thrust in the opposite direction. If you now simply move the position of the inner ring in a different direction, the direction of the thrust changes directly and with it the direction of flight. This allows the flying object to fly in all directions without changing the angle of the entire rotor. As a reminder, a helicopter must tilt the rotor in order to change its direction. In addition, the position of the ring can be used to regulate the strength of the thrust. For example, the further the inner ring is moved from the center, the stronger the thrust becomes. And this flexibility in terms of thrust is actually a huge advantage. Cyclotech wants to use precisely this technology in its new CruiseUp flying object. CruiseUp is a so-called electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft and it's supposed to contain six such rotors. In fact, after 15 years of development, Cyclotech has already made several test flights with a prototype. So this technology looks super fancy at first, but let's take another look at the specific advantages it is supposed to have. 
The cruise app is primarily intended as a means of transportation for large cities. The first point is its extreme maneuverability and stability in flight. For example, it should be able to easily compensate for a gust of wind that could push it off its flight path because the rotors can change thrust very quickly in all directions. In fact, according to Cyclotech, a prototype developed for parcel transportation should be able to compensate for gust of wind up to a speed of 18 meters per second. This corresponds to a wind force of seven or eight, which is already relatively strong wind. The second point is its size. It's just 6.7 meters long and 3.3 meters wide. This means that it can also land in relatively densely built up cities. This makes the cruise up quite small compared to the competition. For example, the German startup Volocopter great startup, has also developed a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft for use in large cities, albeit with a more traditional drive system like that of a drone. The development is called Volo City and it's 11.3 meters long and 9.3 meters wide. Incidentally, both flying objects are two-seaters. But let's take a look at the range Cyclotech promises and the speed at which we could fly through the city in the future. The company advertises a range of 100 kilometers, which would actually be enough for short distances in cities. For comparison, it's just under 29 kilometers from the northernmost point of Cologne, the city I live in Germany, to the southernmost point of it. So you could cover this distance more than three times with cruise up. I know in the US distances are often a little bit longer, so that might be a problem. According to Cyclotech, cruise up should reach a top speed of 150 kilometers per hour. Compared to city traffic, that would be very fast. That all sounds very positive, but I've already teased out that there are also some disadvantages and hurdles. And of course, I also want to talk about these. In my German videos, I always say this is a großes Aber, the big problems and hurdles and I want to talk about these now. But first a quick note, if you don't want to miss any more videos, click on subscribe and activate the bell. Okay, let's come to the problems. One problem I see with Cyclotech is their timetable. The cruise up is not due to come onto the market until 2035 at the earliest. That's very late compared to the competition and the competition in the field of electrical vertical takeoff aircraft is pretty big. I've already mentioned Volocopter. They want to deploy their Volo City in Paris as early as mid-2024. Maybe we can be there and even test it. They want to use the vertical takeoff aircraft, which will connect several points within the city. For this, the Volo City should fly around 35 kilometers and the top speed will only be 110 kilometers per hour, but I would say it's perfectly adequate for the intended purpose for the first time of this use. And all of this means that the Volo City will come onto the market 11 years before cruise up. And it may well be that Volocopter or other companies will already have established themselves in the infrastructure of cities by then. This means that Cyclotech will probably have to stand out all the more in order to establish itself on the market and find the necessary funding. And that brings us to an important point, the cost. Of course, we still have to wait and see how expensive cruise up will be, but over 150 million euros will be invested in the project by the time it goes onto mass production and over 20 million is already being invested. Cyclotech will also have to earn the money again when their developments go to market. So it remains to be seen how expensive the flying object will be. Experts also see a number of problems with the drive. Firstly, these rollers are said to be very heavy and secondly, they have a very large surface area which increases the air resistance. And also, cruise up has no wings to provide lift, which means that constant thrust is required during flight. All of this naturally consumes a lot of energy, which then has an effect on the range, for example. I personally still find the whole thing super exciting from a physical point of view and I'm also curious to see how the whole thing developed and what unexpected things might come out of it. However, it seems to me personally that CruiseUp still has a few hurdles to overcome and I can't yet estimate the company's success. But how do you see it? And do you think that air caps will generally become established in cities or not? Let us know in the comments and I hope you like the first video of the German Science Guy and I say See you next time. Bis dahin. Macht's gut. Your Jacob.